Hello everyone. Welcome to worship. It is an honor and a blessing to worship along with you. What about if we start with a prayer? Dear God, we ask you, your Holy Spirit, that guide us and lead us through your word today. Open our hearts and minds so we can listen to your to your voice. So we can keep your teaching today in our hearts and let us follow your spirit so we can apply it to our life in your name we pray amen The gospel this morning comes from the 18th chapter of Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet, because this widow keeps coming to me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? 
I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Here ends the reading. Hello, I'm Drew Nelson, and this is my faith statement. Colossians 4.2 Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. I remember during vacation Bible school, we had to find a God sighting every day and then share it with everyone the following day. Originally, I had a tough time with this because personally, I don't see miracles happen every day, and it's not like you can look outside and see Jesus walking his dog. But after people began to share their God sightings, that's when I started to understand a little bit more. You don't see God, you just see parts of him. When someone does something nice for you, that's God using them as an outlet for his kindness and compassion, and even seeing something normal like a cool looking cloud is a sight of God's creation. I remember one time I was in math class and I finished an assignment early. But rather than going on my phone or doodling, I decided to pray. About a minute into my prayer, I got a little discouraged because I wasn't sure if God was out there listening. But at that moment, I looked outside to see an airplane flying by. A few years prior, I would have just seen that as a normal plane and that the school might be under a flight path. But now I saw that plane as God's presence and that he was out there listening. My favorite Bible verse is Colossians 4.2. It says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Although it, can be, although it can sometimes be difficult to see God's presence and work in the world, I learned that as long as you stay optimistic and keep an eye out for him, you'll see him. At the beginning of this year, my sister's car got set on fire right outside of our house. During that time, I tried to remember that God was there and that he allowed that to happen for a reason, but that reason didn't jump out to me right away. A few weeks later, we bought her a new car, and to get to the dealership, we had to drive through where my grandparents lived. When we got back from the dealership, we got a call from my grandpa telling us that if we had stopped by their house on the way to the or on the way back from the dealership, we would have seen that my grandma's health was deteriorating. So looking back at it, my sister's car said getting set on fire allowed us all to spend more time with my grandma before she passed. Sometimes seeing God's presence in the world and in our lives can be hard to do, but he'll always lay out the dots for us to connect. Whenever I'm in a tough situation, I know that it's God's work and that it's happening for a reason. Hello, my name is Jonathan Mingus, and this is my faith statement. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Recently, my much-loved grandfather passed away. I know that through my faith in Jesus, I will get to see him again in heaven. I know this because of Jesus' love for us and because of my faith in his promise of eternal life. My belief in Jesus has helped me to be strong and help my grandma with Jesus' help. I know that I can help others to come and believe in him. I can do this by helping people I know through my actions and speech, by being kind and courteous to the people in my neighborhood. I can show God's love for all of us through b- through our believing in Jesus. We are all God's children and through Jesus. He loves us all of us. He loves all of us as he loves Jesus, his son. My faith in Jesus has helped me in these past few months to work through grief and has helped me to assist my grandma to adjust to a new life. I have seen how her faith has helped her through this difficult time. Jesus has promised that he will always be with us and that he will stay with us until we go to live with him forever in heaven. I know that he has been and always will be guiding me through life and helping me to make good choices as to what I need to do and say. I know that by my faith he has taken my sins away so that when I pass on, it will be to live with him forever in heaven. Jesus is my faithful companion and friend. He shares my happy times and my sad times. Whenever I need him, he is always by my side, his helping hand on my shoulder to guide me and show me the way I need to go. I will forever be grateful and proud to call him my savior and friend. Hello, I am Eleanor Hoffman, and my Bible text for my faith statement is Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Jesus has commanded us to love one another, but I confess I struggle to find the courage to do so. All the while that I find myself frightened by rejection and dismayed by indifference, Jesus would be standing there whispering to me and pointing to those moments saying, There, that's where love is, and that's where love could be. Over the past year, I've begun to see where love is and where it could be, but still, I find myself inert. 
I see where that love is, but what do I do? How do I know what to do? Jesus whispers, act in compassion. How? Like a patient teacher, he waits for me to eventually realize his meaning. I have learned that to be able to recognize love is to recognize the sacrifices given through that love, such as the strength to let yourself become vulnerable by putting faith into another. Or as I have found, acting through sincerity, the act of compassion that I have discovered is reminding someone, truthfully, the importance you see in them. Jesus was the one to show me this. Where I have held people crying in my arms or have desperately pleaded those close to me not to give up on themselves and their lives, Jesus was there whispering, this is where love is. This is where love could be. I ask upon Jesus for the courage to have compassion, and he continues to show me where it is and where it could be. Amen. Confirmance. Your bravery is an example to everyone. And we are all proud of you. We're all proud to see you standing among us and sharing your faith. Sharing your faith statement. It's not easy to be here and share. But you did it, and you did it really well. Have you ever think what is next? Have you ever think what is after confirmation? So how can you hold on to your faith statement every day? How can you hold on to God when things are not easy? How are you going to lead in whatever next stage you are? How is your leadership going to impact our community? Life will be challenging and you will face new things, new things every day. You will be making new friends, you will have new teachers and many other things. And sometimes new things are not that easy. But how can we focus on things that matters? Number one, love and seek Christ. Do it every day and in any situation. Love and seek Christ. Pray, pray like this widow every day, a constant prayer. We will not change God's mind with our constant prayer. But God will change our minds to be like Him. Read your Bible and meditate on it. A Bible text every day will make a difference in your day. We have an amazing gift, and it's to know the amazing story of the life of Jesus. Knowing Jesus more will lead us to be like Him, will lead us to be Christ-like. Do not compare yourself with anyone. Don't compare with anyone else. Don't pay attention of what the world is telling you to be. Knowing Jesus, there's your identity. You will find your, your identity there. So don't compare, your, don't compare your faith statement to the other faith statements. You are so awesome just being who you are. The way that God made you. Listen to your parents, grandparents, and the people that loves you. Be kind to everyone and make time to talk with your unchurch friends. In one way or another, you will always have faith discussions. And what a better way to show your faith statements than doing it with love. Do not forget that your pastors and your community, your congregation, loves you. We are here. Whatever you are, school, doing different activities, you're not alone. We're, we are here for you, and we love you, each and every one of you. Don't keep your faith statements just for yourself. Share it with your neighbor, with your friends, with your classmates, with that one that you think you cannot connect. Share it with everyone that is close to you. Jesus wants you to share this to change a life. And once again, remember, you're not alone. Congregation, I have more questions than answers for you. To each and every one of us. The parable of the unjudged just and the stubborn widow 
demands a re-examination of our fate. Have we turned a deaf ear to those who cry out in need? Are we being just like the unjust judge? The thing is, or are we only listening to, the, to, to our close circle, to those ones who are just close to, a, to our uh, safe zone? Are we just listening to those ones who are in our comfort zone? How can we make a way, how can we create a way so these beautiful faith statements can be heard in every corner of our society? How can we walk with our confirmants and our youth together as one body of Christ to share the love of God with all our neighbors? Right now we are here, we are celebrating, and this is what we need to do. We are so joyful. We must celebrate all their and our immediate victories without losing the main goal. The now is equally important than the yet. And this take me to uh, remember that a few weeks ago, Pastor Chad challenged us to dream. How about if we make a commitment to realize God's dream? This dream is inspiring Jesus' teachings. And this dream includes a commitment to lift up all generations of every corner in our society, not only the ones in our church. In order to dream God's dreams, we must be a kind, loving, and patient, patient congregation because transformation, it's a process, not a single event. And we need all generations on this. I love and I celebrate that we show God's love to the Afghan family without saying any word. And I love it. We don't always need to speak the same language to show God's love. There is always a universal love language. And I love every one of you for that and more. But the importance of going beyond our boundaries, trying to reach our neighbors, is because not everyone has the blessing to have a loving family like Grace Lutheran Church. My family and I, we have that blessing. We have all the love that we need with every one of you. And we feel blessed and we feel safe when we are around you. We feel safe when we are in our church, in our home. I'm just going to share something, and this is just to make an example. September was a little bit rough. September was a blessing, but there was uh, a little bumps. Five different people in five different days outside my safe zone outside my loving community made mean comments because I am Latino and then and they told me that they just don't like it so they didn't provide a service or they didn't uh, they didn't receive me well just because of that that will not st make me stop praying for them that will not make me stop showing the love of Jesus to them. But I have the blessing to have this loving family called Grace Lutheran Church. My concern is our neighbors, our youth, different generations who are going to the same stuff and do not know that we are here for them. That they are going to the same stuff and they don't have a family that can that loves them. Jesus wants us to share love to bring hope to this world. Jesus wants us to share his love to bring hope to our community, to our neighbors. We don't want to be like this judge, that he did not care about anyone. We want to be like Jesus, and we need to focus on Jesus, and we want and Jesus want us to focus on his resurrection because focusing on Jesus resurrection will bring life and hope to this world 
let's not compare ourselves to anyone, to any other church, or to whatever is going in the world. Let's not focus on whatever this world is telling us. Let's focus on Jesus. Let's move away from where we are, uh, from all the problems and all the mistakes, and just focus on Jesus. Remember, after re Jesus' resurrection, he told his disciples, he sent a message to them that he will meet them away from the tomb, the tomb, away from the tomb, because he, Jesus didn't want his disciples to be focuses, focusing on the tomb and whatever happened on the cross. He wanted them to focus on Jesus' resurrection, on life, on a life full of Jesus, on a life full of love. Congregation, are you living a different world dynamic? But if you share with them your wants and your experience, they will find similarities, and that will help and mean a lot to them. Let's walk together. Let's be intentional with sharing stories with one another. Confirmance and congregation. If we pay attention to this parable, maybe we find Jesus not just being the opposite of this judge. We will find Jesus in this widow. Just knocking on our hearts every day. Knocking on our door and telling, hey, this is your neighbor needs. This is what the world needs. I, I want you to go and be my answer to this world. I want you to share love and be the answer, my answer to your neighbor. So let's find Jesus in every situation. And in order to make a way for these faith statements to get in all corners of society... Let's forget about any kind of comparison. We need to create something new. We need to create new ways, new forms of sharing God's love. We need to listen to our neighbor's needs and focus on what Jesus' resurrection means. Love, hope, life. Let's dream God's dream together. A dream that had that have God's love language, a universal language, that language that can unite everyone, no matter how different we are. And I want to end with this prayer. This was a prayer that Mary, Mother Teresa used to pray a lot. Let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, help us to spread your fragrance everywhere we go. Flood our souls with your spirit and love. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that all our life may only be a radiance of, of you. Shine through us and be so in us that every soul we come in contact with may feel your presence in our soul. Let them look up and see no longer us but only Jesus. Stay with us, and then we shall begin to shine as you shine. So to shine as to be a light to others. And God's people say, Amen. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. So fine, till I asked my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River is chilly and cold, it chills the body. Not the soul. There ain't but one train up on this track. It runs to heaven and right back. Every time we'll praise, every time I feel the spirit, I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit, I will pray. Thank you.
Thank you for being doing worship with us. It's a blessing to do it together. And as we follow this week, as we walk through this week, let's think how, how can we create new ways so our God's message can be uh, can, can go through our neighborhood so our neighbors can hear God's voice through us. So how let, let's let's think how can we create new ways to share God's love with everyone. And I want to I want to end with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.